our campaign is called Is It Fair? And it is to um, create uh, an equal world for women and girls uh, in work and school and society. So to promote our campaign, we came up with an Instagram and an email so people can get in touch with us and know what's going on to do with our campaign. What are our goals? Our goals are to create a more equal, um, a more equal world um, for women to live in, so it's just fair for them. Um, and we also want them to be able to express themselves freely, so not feeling as though they're in constant strain of being perfect and being in just a high, higher standard. And we'd also like for more people to see and understand the problem so that they can help us overcome it. So we're going to spread awareness for this. It is important to us because girls shouldn't have to um, feel as though they are less important. So they shouldn't have to feel as though they aren't valued and they shouldn't be not valued. And girls should be responsible for boys' behaviour, mm -hmm. such as not being able to wear things because boys might react when you do it. Um, it, it not only affects girls now, but it's going to affect us in the future. So we want to try and stop it from happening now so we can prevent it from happening in the future. What are the problems? There are many problems um, with gender inequality, but um, we've tried to focus on the issues which will affect us the most, um, such as in the workplace and in schools. Uh, the higher expectation that women are held to than men in workplaces and schools, such as having to wear makeup and always being dressed smartly and having their hair done nicely. Constantly being like primped and like they have got to present themselves properly. Um, the different standards which they are held, which are held to and they are put down and treated differently with phrases such as boys will be boys and um, they're just being boisterous. So we, the boys get away with a lot more stuff yeah. because they <laughs> just it's just what people say is how they are. Another one of our main points is that there are unnecessary rules aimed at girls which can prevent them from getting full education, such as at Georgie School, if you wear have nail polish or fake nails on, you can get sent home for the day. And then you'd, uh, so you've got to send, get sent home by having acrylics on because um, I'm not sure the reason why <laughs> you, know, yeah. they, you know, get sent home and that affects your learning and comes sent back. How we plan to solve this? We plan to solve this by spreading awareness and getting more people involved in it to stop it, to, to get more people involved to um, try and stop it from happening. Uh, to involve schools and bringing up the issues and how we plan to solve them. Like, uh, schools may not be aware of how people feel about this and what is actually going on. Um, make sure that everyone knows what is wrong. So make sure everyone knows the issues which is going on. Because a lot of people aren't aware that this is actually happening. happening and uh, people aren't aware that they are doing this. It's just like what comes naturally. It just gets past the day-to-day behaviour. To do petitions and marches within our campaign by spreading awareness and making it more clear to what's happening and having one-to-one -one, um, interviews with people to get more uh, in, in information, information <laughs> on um, like people who like experience this so we can get more information on it and uh, build that campaign. Yeah. Um, our target audience is it's quite a wide spectrum. So we're targeting uh, people in schools because that is what's affecting us now. But then we're also going to try and uh, help in the workplace um, uh, to stop that from happening for us in the future and for the people who are in there now. Uh, and for in conclusion, um, <laughs> in, in conclusion, we just want to raise awareness about it and hope that it's not passed by, as day to day behaviour. And another main point that I don't think we've got on there is in Georgie's school, 
Girls don't have the option to play rugby because it is classed as a masculine sport and we want people to have the options and choices to do things they might like to. Oh, it's pretty devastating because you know, like, so a, a long time ago, I was sixteen, and you know, and, <laughs> and I thought the world would be so very different than it is now. And it's really tough to hear you talking about the same issues that I used to talk about a long time ago. And mm. and um, not that I don't I don't want to discourage you in any way from trying because I mean this is a really yeah. long battle and it's really yeah. important that yeah. you're participating in. Yeah. I guess I'd be curious to hear, when did you first notice, do you think, that things aren't fair? Well, I first noticed um, going up to secondary school and learning about all these new rules, which um, <laughs> yeah. I'd have to... A deal like, to. Yeah. So, for, for size, uh, the rugby thing, um, I'd love to play rugby, but just in my school, it's not given as an option to do it and i just think that's totally crazy mm -hmm. i guess i kind of figured at the end of school so some of uh, my my friend who's autistic she had a bit of a breakdown i guess i don't really want to be rude to her mm -hmm. but then there's another boy in the other class who has autism but he had a lash out when his um the way they reacted it was different to when they handled it with her and I kind of didn't understand why and then I found out about new rules that I had to follow going into secondary school and I realised it was more in favour of boys than girls. And mm -hmm. um, I wanted to say I'm really <laughs> impressed with your logo because I think mm -hmm. the way in which it is it's turned out blurry on here but it's, it's not blurry. blurry. It's, it's, not blurry. Blurry. it's really powerful. I think visually what you captured there, you know, is it fair? No, it's not. We know that that's a great question because you know you can't answer it any other way. But I just think the way that you you visualise what your campaign is about by like, using that. Logo, so it, it represents um the boys have more privilege, so they're like way more down, they get more privilege. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. and I was really interested what you'd said in your thing. It, it was on your slide, but you didn't mention it about working with school boards because mm -hmm. I think that's really important. If you can give like that first-hand evidence back to the school boards to say because my school board has it. It, like a lot of power over what happens, and they the can also make like bigger decisions and like mm -hmm. they can change the rules, can't? They? And I think if you feed that back into the school boards, and, and then you know that sort that. It's all you can try, isn't it? At this yeah, point? you can get to the, the school parliament. So mm. the the children in school who are like they get to talk to the head teacher yeah, and then mm. they pass on information to the head teacher. And then we can also get um, up to the school board as well. We can try. Mm. You can try. Yeah, that's your influence. Uh, are you on any school election leadership? Uh, for example, the parliament or the cabinet, because that's a really good way to, especially in secondary school to gain power to the head teachers, the school governors, the school board, to really help change these rules. Uh, that's a great idea, because especially in my school, I uh, was campaigning with the PE lessons, especially because with the girls, we were doing lots of dance and gymnastics. And we hadn't been outside. I think doing a PE lesson, I think it was two terms non-stop, we were doing dance and gymnastics and table tennis, which we thought we were getting our physical education in. We were doing the same thing non stop. So, if you think that's an issue in your school, you should try and get student leadership. Yeah, yeah that's a really good way to get up there. I'm not even at secondary school yet. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, uh, in my school, I did. Um, like campaign to, uh, I did uh, vote to get in and I was very close, but I didn't manage to get in. So I'm going to try again this year because yeah, uh, it's New Year, so new mm -hmm. people. Um, and yeah, like what Ruby said um, about um, uh, how the boys get a lot more like variations of um, sports. So in my school for PE, most of the time we did. Um, uh, dodgeball mm -hmm. so they just I think like we did football for a term 
and then we did dance for a term. I think that's all we did. Mm. And then just for the rest of it, they just filled it in with dodgeball, which... So no like team sports, no like team sports. I was just going to say, we were like following it at our school, so we can bring it up yeah. there, to the head teacher. Suki, um, what I was just doing is um, in my school, um, the whole, well, a lot of the girls in the year nine um, what, did a protest um, missing school because of the sports. Yeah. Um, because all they got taught to do dance and gymnastics the whole time while boys did. It is really so unfair because yeah. things are classed as masculine sports. Yeah. Also, how um, the other day I was looking for a girl football sport on BBC and I could not find it anywhere. Mm. Whereas all I could see is uh, like male football teams popping up. Yeah, the male football sports are way more glorified. Mm. Actually, yeah. Meg? No, no yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can go, sorry. <laughs> I just wanted to let you know, it's uh, just an interesting contrast. I sp spent a lot of time in Australia and all the high schools in Australia, that's mixed sport. So the girls and the boys, boys play sports together yes. from primary all the way through to the end of high school. In yeah. 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 That is so that idea. And I think it really does change the culture. Mm. And, it, and, and it actually, so my girls uh, did spend most of their school education in Australia and they've got lots of male friends and they're like real proper friends. Yeah. Mm. yeah. And, and that playing sport together all the time throughout that time at school, it just creates a different sort of possibilities for friendships and relationships. Yeah, in, in my school I find it also quite strange how they've got all of um, the classes split up so there's mm. like girls on it's one bad. team and boys on the other team mm. but like, a lot of the girls on my team are like saying what like people say physical like they, they can do all the stuff that yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Because maybe it's just lobby, maybe yeah. it's a lobby for mixed gender sports. So yeah. I think it did recruit you up. I'm sorry. Sorry. <laughs> 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 I'm going to lead a protest to do with um, school dress code. Mm. Yeah. yeah. That's just I'm going to the day on the thing. Yeah. Uh, you said. Yeah. It's just pathetic that they tried to point out the tiniest thing that didn't matter. Uh, yeah, the whole way through online learning I had acrylic nails on, but um and it didn't affect my learning at all. But, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, especially because it's just painted nails. Yeah. Also, you're not allowed to have your hair dyed, which is funny because I think I can't it's get it. But, but if you have your hair dyed, I um if, if they're paying more attention to someone having their hair dyed rather than the lesson, it kind of shows something about your teaching method. <laughs> I, I mean, you love to hair, but I'm not going to spend an hour with your hair. I was going to say, my school, I think I could go to the same school as you, um, there's a big thing in sick form about like the social action group that they were talking about bringing down into the lower years starting in September. So that is open to absolutely anybody. So if you wanted to get involved in that, that would be like a really good way of getting more involved because from my experience, the teachers really, really do want to make a change and they want to listen to what we've got to say. And it's like a safe space for everyone to say what they want and like, get across that point in like a calm way without having to like kind of argue with the teacher yeah. about it mm -hmm. and it's like i feel like they are trying just quickly yeah, yeah. just the just bit that you talk about the workplace which i thought was really really good and i think um and you talked about kind of ex talking about the other women that have experienced yeah, it and that's sort of stuff, right yeah because we're not obviously in the workplace <laughs> yeah <laughs> but what i was say was that yeah they're, they're, they, they might inspire you but you'll inspire them as well and the mm -hmm. idea that you'll be going in and saying this is my future i want a workplace that i want to work in is a very very different message than might have been there before and i think that's a really nice way of going about it that as young people say we want to work somewhere that's good so mm -hmm. the, I, I like that bit of it as well i mean the schools obviously want to work on but i like that bit really i thought that was really really good i think you'll inspire if you do that thank you mm -hmm. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.